Welcome guys, welcome to the 2018 Renaissance Symposium. We're really glad you guys are all here. My name is Kevin Lai. Um, you can catch me on our regular uh, info uh, support channel. I work weekends, so I'm a weekend guy. So uh, if you guys always have support on weekends, just send us an email, info at renaissance.com. And to my left is my esteemed colleague, Val Lawton. She also works uh, info with us. Um, you can find her on at night. So she's, she's at night out, which is not sleep. Uh, I'm just kidding, I'm just sleep. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some race day pools, race day registration, some check-in, and then photos. Uh, quick show of hands, who's, who's used our race day registration um, check-in feature? So you guys are all, you guys are all masters, right? So you guys are all people, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys are here for the photos, right? All right, so we'll get right into it. So we'll, we'll, give, we'll kind of just uh, offer you guys kind of what we have, and then just some best practices. I'm going to ask that you guys hold your questions to the end. We got quite a bit to get through. And if you guys have anything specific to your needs, um, you know, like, hey, I'm doing this for my race, like, what do I do? But ask us at the end if it was more, if it was more specific. Um, what, what I want you guys to take away from this is like what we can offer. Um, and then you can kind of look into, okay, well, they offer this. How is this going to benefit my specific race? Like, we want you guys to start thinking about that. And then you can always ask us at the very end specifically, like, hey, you know, talk to us one on one, be like, hey, I do this and this, what do you guys do? So that's what we'll, that's what we'll do, and then uh, we'll just get going. All right, so the first option we're going to talk about for race day registration is going to be our sign up app. This is probably the best way to get your race day registrations. It's a native Apple and Android app, it's also available as a web URL. It takes credit card swipes, and there's a lot, a lot of preset settings that you can create on your dashboard and within the app. And kind of you'll you'll kind of see you kind of hear this overall in my presentation, but we've developed so many things for you guys that there's so many settings to talk about, so many things to skip, so many things to check on that you guys really have to look into your into the settings and kind of find what's best for your race. Um, we create a lot of things, and we just want to make sure everyone's happy. So be sure to look into these settings and kind of find what's good for your race. That's really important for you guys. And just like a quick little note on, on sign up app, you always want to make sure your registration bids are open. If they're closed, you can't do registrations on race day. So if you're if you're doing reg race day registrations, you know Saturday you know, six to nine, you got to make sure your your registration periods are open during that time period. Get get a lot of questions saying, hey, it's not working. I'm just like, hey, you got to turn, turn your registration periods on. So pretty sure it's a quick little thing. So I'll give you a quick demo on kind of where it is. If you guys have never used it, just to kind of find out where the the sign up settings are. So you just head over to your to your dashboard here, um, and if you go to go go race day. Uh, race day registration and sign up app. So right here, you'll just enable it with this little clip right here. Um, you'll set a password. Um, for me, if you guys, as a password hint, we'll write your password right there. And then if you guys email us, it's so much easier for us to like check in what you guys are doing. Because sometimes <laughs> if that takes like two, e two three emails saying, hey, what's your password? And then you gotta write it out and everything like that. So if you, and if you ever forget your password, it's always right there. So it's really good, good for you guys. And down here, this is where this is where you can set your settings right here. So you can take a look right here. If you click on the default settings, you can see everything that we offer. So when you when you do re re registration through the sign up app, you know you can allow registrants to skip the email field, um, and you can skip all these fields. Um, you can add options to have waivers and everything like that. So it's really good to look into what information you guys need on race day and what information you don't need. Because really, the biggest thing for you guys is getting those registrations in and out, in and out. So you don't want to waste time saying. Oh, typing in your country, typing in your street address, typing in your phone number, because that stuff might not be relevant to you guys. Obviously, you might need it, but you probably won't need it. So it's a good idea to look into these things, and you can just see what you can skip here. So once you have that fit configured, you can name your settings, um, and then you just hit save, you know, and you just hit save settings. Um, and then to access the sign up app um, on through the URL is simple. You just click on this URL right here, um, and then you can copy and paste that that. Um, that uh, URL to uh, you know your kiosk, and then all you got to do is copy and paste that URL. And all you have to simply do is just find your race in here, and then just click on it, and then you would just have to enter registration mode. And obviously, it's not where it is, but I'll pull it up on the on the app really quick just to show you guys. Um, so this is this is kind of the home page of the app. Um, you can use these these date pickers to to search for your races depending on what your date is. Once you have your race pulled up, right here we've got Run Sign Up Marathon, simply click on it. And to your left right there, that's where you're going to find your settings. It's kind of hidden, 
Um, so this is, you can also configure your settings in here as well. So if you click on settings right here, you can see that we created that default settings page on our dashboard. This is where you can click, uh, I want that setting, or if you want, if you have another specific setting, um, you can just click there, um, hit, hit back, go into your uh, enter registration mode, and simple. You just enter all the information that you need, proceed with the registration, and then you can use a credit card swipe, or you can type in a credit card. Okay. Yep. I'm just curious why it had to be, you haven't integrated it with like Square Up or something instead of having your own dongle. So we just, I'm not. I can answer that question. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> due to PCI restrictions, we have to encrypt the credit card numbers on the hardware itself. Okay. So it's a um, specific, unique type of um, verification that we have to do on our end. We, that's why we have to build the hardware ourselves. Believe me, if we didn't have to, we would not want to have to do any kind of hardware. That's why I haven't used the app specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just used the, you know, the yeah. computer kiosk, so yep. you can use Square or whatever they do. I understand. And, and they have their own encryption yeah. system. Um, uh, we have to do our own okay. in order for it to work with our system. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, the next one we're going to talk about quickly is kiosk mode. Kiosk mode is a simple registration page. It's useful for really easy events, simple events. You can do payment by credit cards, cash a check. It's important that for kiosk mode, if you've got like USAT stuff, groups and teams stuff, specific fundraiser stuff, we don't support that on our kiosk mode. you got to use expo mode. We'll get into that you know, in a few minutes real quick. So just a quick find out where, where kiosk mode is. Again, we do recommend that you guys use the sign up app. It's our newest app, and we definitely um, we really enjoy that. So simply, uh, same thing, go race day, uh, race day registration, and then kiosk mode. Um, there's less things you can configure within kiosk mode. Um, you can see you can now put a sign up your kiosk and, and all these settings here. Um, there's also a setting here to allow registration through kiosk or sign up app only. Um, we'll get into a little bit why you might not want to do this, but basically when you check that on, um, if anyone goes to your race page here, it's not going to allow you to, to register through uh, you know, on the Google website. But we'll get into why that's not maybe a good idea, but we'll talk about that. Um, does that button, does that option exist under the uh, sign up app settings as well? Do we allow registrations over to Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so next we're going to get into Expo mode. Um, Expo mode is uh, is essentially the regular registration page that you guys see on you. When you go, when the person's going to your race page, you click sign up, they go through that whole process of exactly what Expo Mode is. The big difference between Expo Mode is users are automatically logged in after they register. Um, and then there's a next regist uh, register button that I should have confirmation screen. So if you look, just like right here, um, so this is what a normal confirmation screen looks like. There's a next register button right there. So once they register, they click next, re next register and the next one is very good type of information. Um, the big thing also with this is if you're a race director and you have Expo mode and you give the URL to your volunteers or your kiosks, make sure you log out of your account. What happens is if, you, if you're already logged into your account and then you give that URL to that, on that computer and you're logged into your run sign account, when you click next new registrant, it's going to add a sub account to your, to your main account. So, I got a call at about 11.59 on a Friday night and said, he, this, well, I had a race director say, I have about 100 sub accounts in yeah. my main account. And I, I went in there to clean it up for him. But what happened was he was logged in into his uh, run sign account, and then he was in expo mode. And they were just clicking new register, new register on his account. So he had all these sub accounts that weren't his. Um, so make sure you log out of, uh, log out of your account. That's, uh, that's a big thing there. Um, and then, so, Next, we're going to talk about a little bit of some good practices for you guys. Um, so the reason why um, the biggest issues with race day registrations, like I said, is you're trying to pump registrations in and out. You want you don't want long lines. You don't want queuing. Um, that's you know not good for you guys. That's not good for us. And our friend and participants don't like that. So what can you do to avoid bottlenecks? Really, the one thing you guys want to think about is always have a lot of options available. Be ready to take you know, checks, cash. Credit cards. If someone comes up to the kiosk and isn't really bad typing, how do you volunteer to write it? Just turn that computer around and just type for them. Uh, that's really important because you you want to make sure the customers and the participants are taken care of. So you don't want to like you know segregate anyone being like oh like they registered for the last like 30 years and check and they're used to that. You don't want to be like well it's 2018 we don't take checks. No, you want to make sure you guys are ready for checks. 
and ready to accommodate everyone. So you recommend you don't, uh, as a timer, I don't come just put the laptops out. There should be volunteers there. It, yes. It's yeah. So it's kind of how what you know what you're used to. I mean, if you're used to doing it yourself, you know, you can definitely go for it. You know, a lot of races I know use volunteers to to use uh, for kiosk. Just you know, if there's you know, a thousand people trying to register a race, that you know one person can handle it. Um, so there, there are races that use volunteers um, to help with the with the race day um, administration. But if you're used to it and you have the manpower, definitely, definitely do it. Yeah. Another good option on race day is if there's a long line, uh, you can just walk down that line and be like, hey, everyone, get on your phones, register on your phones, and you can they are there and just go on your website and they can just register on their phones. Um, so you guys know how on your race page website, it's like runsnap.com slash New Jersey slash race slash Morristown and then slash your race page. What you guys can do is you guys can create a simple URL. So all you gotta do is you can say, hey, everyone go to runsnap.com slash race, whatever it might be. And they can easily go on their website, go on their phones and say runsnap.com slash race, and boom, they're there and they can register really quickly. So if you combo that simple URL, it's what we call fast registrations. You can, on fast registration, you can skip certain fields. Um, and so we'll take a look at that really quick. So basically, you know, if we, if we enable fast registrations, um, so on this menu search right here, if you just type in fast, um, you can find this fast registration right here. So with fast registration, you've got a couple options here. Um, you can do it, you know, mobile registration options, fast registrations by date range, by URL, or in the next book. So if we enable mobile registration, we'll take a look at that. Basically, what you can do is you can skip all these fields. So if anyone's on their mobile, they can go on their website, they can, they can go on your race page, um, and if you say, okay, we don't need state, you know, we don't need country, we don't need street address, we don't need city or phone, um, we'll skip all these membership donations, corrals, custom questions, you know, you're just trying to get people registered and onto, onto, the, onto the line. So you can skip all these things. So if people are online, and they go to runsnap.com slash race, and they're on their phones, and they can just skip all these things. They just got to enter their name, uh, email, gender, date of birth, SNP, and then they're in. So you're trying to pump these people in and out. So it's, it's a really good idea to look into this fast registration. Um, another good option here is uh, fast registration by date range. So if you got your race on Saturday morning, 9 a.m., right, Friday night, you can just be like, all right, from uh, from Friday at midnight to Saturday at 9 a.m. We're going to do everyone that, right, that comes onto the, the sign-up page, they're going to use this fast, the, this fast registration. So it doesn't matter if they're on the computer, it doesn't matter if they're on the mobile. If anyone goes to your race site and they register, you, you can do this, this uh, fast registration. So it's, a good, it's always a good option to combo these things with your race day registrations. Um, and this is really how you beat that, those long lines and beat those cues. Because really, you don't want those bottlenecks. You don't want people constricted to just, okay, I gotta go to the registration line and I gotta wait 45 minutes. You know, if you're, you know, you can tell people to go register when they're on their way here, in their cars, on their phones. And you can just like have on your Facebook page, like, hey, race day, if you wanna register, you know, today, you know, go to this website. It really keeps your options open. And that's really how you guys are gonna beat the lines and, and uh, not have angry for this case. I know on, on race day, you know, people are angry sometimes and they just want to run and they're waiting three hours or whatever and they come to you and they're pissed and you're like, look, you know, there's something we can do. There is. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, those are really good options for you guys. Two things. Uh, did the sign-up app handle uh, one uh, multiple people, uh, you know, add a participant kind of thing, mm -hmm. and, and does it handle giveaways? Uh, it does not handle giveaways. Yeah, the sign-up app does. It does handle giveaways? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't do, um, it's got to be a single person. Um, it doesn't do like multiple registrations. Actually, because that's a problem I ran into recently. You know, mom comes and wants to register everybody and wants to pay one time, right. and she can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That's something we can definitely look into. So the option is to have another machine somewhere that ha that has a regular registration mm -hmm. form. And that's where and that's where they can go quick on. Quick registration. Mm -hmm. and, and that they can, if you can enter the fast mode, mm -hmm. They can do that. Yeah, because it's, it's exactly like it's separate from your uh, sign up app. So it's just your regular registration process. And you can just skip a couple of these fields that you, know, you might not need. Those are good for you. So why, uh, why, why would you use, I guess, using that though, you have to do credit card payments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to enter your, your credit card. 
it's like a normal, you know, how do you normally move a registry you know, two months out? Or, well, people come up <coughs> because you don't always know which avenue they're going to go. So they, right. they bond starts one, then you can't register another, then you get mad, mm -hmm. and then you got to back out. Right. Start yeah, you know what you can do is be like, hey, if you want to register online, you get credit card information, and you're paying by card. You can just be like, hey, go on this website, you can pay by card really quick, and you get you, know, you can get all your family members in. All right, so that's kind of what we have for registrations. Um, we'll quickly jump into some check-in stuff. So the first thing that I'm really going to quickly talk about is uh, a new check-in app is coming. Um, it's currently in development, so it should be out in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be just a big overhaul on the back end of things. Um, so it's coming, um, so be on the lookout for that. I don't know if Matt want to talk to you about um, Check it out. Yeah, um, so I guess to quick, well, talk one minute to the mic. Um, so basically, what we're doing for the check in app is we found some issues in isolated instances where, like, very large races or Sometimes smaller races, it would just go like a white screen of death, which is really bad. And so basically what we found was the underlying architecture that we originally used wasn't great because um, we couldn't track down what was causing that problem unless we had the device, which is really impossible to do for people who are having that problem on site. So we completely redesigned it from the bottom up. Um, the, it's going to be the exact same look and feel of the other app, and it's going to replace it. So you guys won't notice too much difference, but um, what we're doing is re-architecting it from the bottom up, so it's not going to have any of the issues with the old one in terms of it crashing. And we're also going to be putting in a bunch of new features that have been waiting to be added to the check-in app for a while. So um, if you have any specific questions on like what features we're going to add to the check-in app, um, talk to me, because I got the list of ones that we're working on on my computer. I can go through them with it if you want to. Cool. So be on the lookout for that exciting stuff. Yeah. So we're going to talk quickly about what we have right now. I'd like to check in after you, the you know, app check-in and then also the like, web check-in. So with the legacy check-in, this is probably best if you guys have a stable internet connection. Uh, for the Scott Coffee Run that we do, uh, we use the legacy check-in. We were, we were doing it in a uh, little uh, running store. So there's good internet. We knew we were working on this internet. So this is how we, this is how we did our uh, check-in. Uh, there's a cool thing with, with check-in, you can delegate access and create custom links. Um, I don't know if you guys have used the legacy check-in app, but you have to get to, you have to get onto the dashboard to, to get to this page. So you don't want to be giving your volunteers you know, your password or anything like that. You might not want them to create an account they don't have, they don't have one. Um, so you can just quickly delegate access and create, it creates a, a link. And you just send them that link and no matter what, if they, have it, if they have an account or they don't have an account, they can get into that link and you can start doing the check-in app. So I'll just quickly talk about the, the check-in app. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's, got, it's pretty cool. It's got a built-in camera support, so you can do QR codes and barcode, um, barcode cameras. Um, it's got fast check-in. Again, it's got, a lot of, it's got a lot of settings that you guys need to take a look at. We'll, we'll kind of go over with that. We got, cool, we got cool features. We do waiver signatures. So um, if you have an import, if you import purchase them in, they come in and check in, and they haven't signed, signed the waiver, you can just, uh, when you check them in, it'll be like, hey, you can sign the waiver, and they can just draw their, their signature on there, and it shows up on the registration. So we got that cool thing going. Um, there's also a thing you can do where you can link registrations. So if I register all my friends on my one transaction, when you check myself in, uh, it'll be like, hey, do you want to check in Kevin, John, Sally, whatever. And you can just check them all right. And then, um, you know, if only three of them are here, you can just be like, okay, well, I want to check in Kevin, John, and Sally, Matt, and Tommy are here. Again. So you can just select the people you want to check in, and they'll just pull up their check in and go, okay, here's your check in. You want Tom? Done and it's Sally done and Kevin done. So there's quick. There's, there's so a once you've feature. been checked, well, so once you've checked in, that list is going to show up mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll quickly go into it um, on the on the phone here. So it's pretty simple as well. Um, you download the check-in app right here in the bottom left corner. Um, to get to that. So yeah. I've already loaded up my race into into here. So. If you click the top right button, uh, right there, that'll pull up the camera. So this is where you can you can do your QR code and everything like that. To everyone. Um, and so if you if you if they bring your confirmation email, maybe we we give you that QR barcode. You can use this to scan them in. You don't even talk to anybody. You don't have to interact with anybody. You can, just, uh, you can just say hi. Okay, bye. Right. So it's it's pretty straightforward. If you have anyone that's like not going to type or anything like that, it's really good to to just use this as a way to help out. 
Um, so if you take a look here, uh, let's see here, I believe I've been reported to the top of the So here, if you take a look, Tommy Barnes comes in, right? In theory, you could use the top bar to search for him. Comes up. And there's a big X next to him, so he hasn't checked in yet. If you click Tommy and you want to check him in, right? You hit check in. Or we'll, let's just say we'll give him the number four. Here, here's what I'll sign up with the waiver here. So Tommy hasn't signed the waiver. So what you'll do is you'll hand Tommy the phone, and all you gotta do is type, you know, whatever you want, and you hit continue, and now he's now he's signed in, waiver signed, and you can just go back. And when you go onto your dashboard and you find Tommy Barnes on your view participant list, and you hit manage registration, you'll see that exact scribbling that I just did. Um, so it's pretty cool there. Um, and so your settings here in the checkout app is just that same thing, that top left area. So if you click those three set, those three horizontal lines, come here in your settings, and again, this is where you can just configure so many things here. So this is, uh, if you look at the top, you know, you can sort by ordering the last name, first name, or first name, last name, uh, registration date, and everything like that. Um, and if you want, you can you can assign their numbers through the app. Um, you know, here's your right here is your link registration. Um, that's the thing I was talking about. How if you have one person on each transaction, you can, you can accomplish that. So again, same thing. You just want to look into the settings that you guys have, um, and then start configuring um, what you need. The checking app. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with the uh, bid number, mm -hmm. so we can scan a, the bar. Uh, bar yeah. So, the so are you are you doing register like are you having bid assignment done at registration? Yeah. So one, one day. When you uh, load up your list of participants, all that information is already in there. So if it's... But you're assigning them from just as they pick it. It depends. In this situation, I was. You know, I, just, I just didn't have you know, I just didn't have the numbers you know, pre-assigned when they registered. But if you want, if you already have uh, the numbers assigned, you, when you check them in, that information already populates in there. With the, with the QR code. I think he's asking if you scan a barcode on the bid to assign the number. Yes. 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 Through the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. So if you go to the uh, bid entry screen, Kevin, and show them where it is. This is a commonly lost feature, or you're removing it because it's lost. Uh, do you have to, like check in someone? Just, I think it was already on. Just check in someone who's uh, Stephen. In the top right, so there's the, uh, so the little scan you... icons in the top right. That's what you do. Okay, then you just put in. Yep. And then put it. So do barcodes in, in QR, QR codes? QR codes, oh, QR well. codes too? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry to believe this, but so I have a notebook that's got a, a face thing and it's mirrored. Will the mirrored camera understand the barcode? Um, it should. I mean, if you're so you're you're saying you're installing it as an Android app on your Chromebook? No, it, it's a, uh, no, it's, just, it's the web uh, app. Web app is separate, different, different thing. That doesn't have the camera inter integration. Okay, so let's say it was a if you can install an Android app on your Chromebook, it will use the camera and it should do the same thing. Okay. The QR code doesn't care if it's left, right, right, left. Oh, it understands yeah. mirror yeah. and the, the question about like, link registration. If you're checking in a team, team captain shows up and you have a list of people on the team, is there a way to make the checking app be able to go through the members of the team? We're doing that yeah. for the next yeah. version. Cool. Thank you. So for um, yeah, you can do you can do event transfers. We're gonna do event transfers. <laughs> Not yet. Not in the current um, mobile app, but it's gonna be there in like a couple weeks. Well, hopefully. Yeah, we can't have like drop down from America. Event transfers from like that five k to a ten k. If you're doing a lot of event transfers and need to do it now, I would use the legacy version. It's super easy to do it in the web view. Just do it like right in the um, dashboard. Easiest way to do it. Is there a way to seven people come, or one person comes up, he wants to pick up for, it's at a package pick up, wants to pick up for his friend, his other friend. Is there a permission screen? Or is that an idea that you've thought of where just like you're signing a waiver, they can sign saying I picked up for this person. Does that exist or is no, that? No, we really just say if someone wants to pick up, yeah. they can just say they're picking up for you. But yeah. most people, at least most races that I've worked with, they don't really care. They're just like, it's, if you want to pick it up, go ahead, it's fine. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do um, race photos. And if we have time, we're going to get to video because video is kind of neat as well. So basically, um, we're going to go through the photo setup, uploading photos, um, adding photo locations. 
tagging and viewing photos and then um, adding video to results, um, which is a really neat feature that we offer. Um, our photo setup um, is found under photos and then setup. So it's pretty self-explanatory there. On this page, you're gonna um, you're gonna be able to see just like your different options as far as if you want the public to be able to view them or if you want the, the photos to be kept private, if you want people to be able to tag themselves or tag their friends as far as bid numbers or, or by name. Um, and then you just want to save those. Um, you can search. Uh, we have a watermarking feature, which is really just kind of like a logo. So you can use the race logo or a sponsor logo. It doesn't cover the whole um, the whole picture, so people can still download those pictures. You know, which isn't that big of a deal if you just want the photos out there to circulate. Um, but it adds like a little bit of advertising, which is really nice. You can add like your main sponsor logo on there and you can choose where you're, you're gonna have that lower left hand corner, right hand corner, that kind of thing. You can upload for previous years as well. So if this is not something that you've done and you have photos from last year or the year before, you can go back and easily upload those photos. So every, they'll be all right there. All right, so uploading your photos, uh, once you, your setup is complete and you've checked everything you want, you're just gonna go to photos and then upload um, and you're going to choose the year that you're going to be uploading for. So obviously, you know, I'm not uploading for 2019 yet because it hasn't happened. So I would be uploading for, you know, um, the 2018 race or if I needed to go back to 2014 for whatever reason, I can upload there as well. You can set your photo location. Start and finish is already in there because those are the most common, but you can add any type of location. So if you have somebody out at like a, you know, a lake, so they're running around a lake, you can put like lake photos, or if you have pre-race photos, you can add those in there. This particular race, we have um, staging is at one location, and so I have that labeled as uh, pre-race at Schwetman, and then they walk down to the start. So I have pre-race at Schwetman, start line, finish line. So it makes it nice and easy to kind of um, just give you that option. So we're just gonna go through, and so you're gonna go up to photos, and upload. I'm going to upload for this one here, and I'm going to upload my finish line photos. And then here you can click and drag, um, you know, an entire file, or you can pick and choose, like if you have to go through and kind of find those those photos, you can do one at a time if you needed to. And then here's my file for the photos, you can click and drag it there. And you just hit upload off. It's very, very quick. I kept the, the file small, but you know, the 60 some odd files and it only just takes really just a couple seconds for it to go there. And then you can view your photos. This is really nice. Um, <laughs> these are the pre-race ones here, but you can see it automatically tags um, it'll go through and it'll automatically tag bid numbers that it recognizes. The only problem with that feature is like if someone's wearing a shirt that says 2014, it'll actually tag 2014. <laughs> so, you know, you can set your bid ranges in there, so it'll ignore that. Um, you know, if I'm using 800 series, then it'll just ignore anything that's not within that series that you set. So that's, that's a nice feature, but if it's wrong, you know, you can easily take that away or you can go ahead and add one in there just by typing it in if you wanted to automatically manually sign them. It does capture, um, I think, about 60% of the bid numbers. So it does a really good job on its own, but if you also add in that feature to be able to allow people to tag themselves or tag their friends, they can go through those untagged photos and find the, the great pictures of themselves. Um, so it's just a really neat little feature there in our locations. Um, you can see you have your different locations. If you've messed up, you can delete the entire file and start from scratch, which is what I did here with the finish line. Um, you can go to your bid management, and uh, you can remove the bid numbers that are not within your valid bid range, like I was talking about, and uh, just you know, lots of little things there that you can add. In. Yes. I find they also tag. If you have a clock in there, they'll tag the clock too. Yeah. Right. So that's why setting your bid range is, is helpful so that way it doesn't it doesn't have that that happen all the time.
Is there a way that you can give your photographer access to just that little piece? Absolutely, yeah. You can do that in the um, in the sharing and access. You can okay. give them access to just the photo section. Just to upload stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there a limit on your photo numbers? No. No, 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 there's no limit. I've only used it a couple of times, but once you've downloaded, like you do a whole file like that and you want pictures to be excluded or removed, I can't remember exactly, but it seems like I had some trouble like just removing some of the photos from that were already uploaded or moving them to another location if they were in the wrong place. Is that, am I remembering right? I mean, I can't, I've only used it a couple of times. Here, you can just delete the photo when you're viewing them. So if you didn't like this one, you but can you move it to another to another folder that you've already downloaded? You know what I'm no, I think you're gonna have to delete it and then <coughs> upload it specifically to that one. Okay, but there's no way to just transfer it. I use it a lot. I find it it's easier if you, on your laptop to do all the editing, get rid of the pictures you don't want, or adjust the uh, vertical, horizontal, or whatever, and then upload it. We have the, uh, by the way, we have the, a lot of issues that we are currently tracking for photos. We're going to be doing a photos project and we have, we know that we need to be able to move between locations. Sorry. We got it. <laughs> and then here's the race page and you can see it creates the link once you add those photos up there. It creates the link for you and so the participants can go in and view. Um, just, you know, they, they can take a look and see what it is that they're looking for. They can also search by bid number and last name on the first page there, right here in this field. Yes? How does that handle multiple runners coming at the same time? Is it focus on one versus another when it's tagging? Just well, in, like in the example, it actually tagged both of those runners. Okay. Um, so, and you can go in and manually, as long as the number is visible yep. and it's not blurry. Um, if you have like blurry numbers, sometimes it won't pick it up. Yep. But it'll tag as many numbers as they see in there that are completely visible. Yes. So, what tags itself look like? Yeah. Yeah. Will it automatically associate the bid number? Yes. Yeah. When when they start typing it in, it'll actually have their bid number. So as long as that bid number is up in the two runs, it'll actually pull it up. So well, like just like an example, you have the two runners if they type in their bid number, they could have also typed their last name. Yes. Yep. So you can type in. There, you can see it there. I just know them because they're my daughters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have a, I have three A Loftons, and I know which one is which. But yeah, you can type it by bid number or last name, and it associates it. Like I was saying, participants can find and tag um, themselves in the photos by the photo page, and they can go to the um, the untagged photo section, and it, it'll filter out all the ones that haven't been tagged already. Can you search by teams? Like if people are just a team, can you put a team name in and have all the team members show up? No, it's just by individual names and bit numbers. So are the participants paying for these pictures, or are they free? The, the ones from us, they're like, they would be free. Like, they, there's no way to stop them from downloading them here. Okay. Um, you can offer like an add-on um, type of thing if you wanted to for them to be able to purchase the video, or the, uh, video, the, the picture themselves. But again, they can share it to Facebook right from, right, right from the page. So it's not going to be like a money maker okay. as far as your race. Goes. We decided not to do paywall for photos. We wanted to make it more just an open type thing, kind of going along. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, and, and the participants love that. Yeah, they love they love look look at me running. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So our race day video. Um, not a lot of people use this one. I I don't think. And it's it's a really neat feature that you can add to your results page. Um, you're gonna upload your video to YouTube, and you're going to link your video to your results by just going to go race day results and then edit results. And you're going to click on video settings. Um, really super easy to do once you get that video up onto onto YouTube. And so, I'll we'll just go through it real quick. Are there any legal issues with putting video online? As long as you own the video? No, yeah. like if, if we, we shot the video, was it pretty fine, but there's kids in the video or anything like that? Yes. No, they signed, they signed the waiver. Okay, so the waiver is typically the code that is. I will say the one thing you need to be careful about is um, if there's audio that you don't own the rights to be playing on the yeah. site, be careful. Um, I usually mute. Let's strip the audio. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to find that under Go Race Day, um, your results. And then you have your video settings here. Okay. Um, so we're going to set up a finish line video on YouTube. Your video ID is just this last part here. That's all you need to copy. Okay. And you're going to put that into... this section here. Okay. Um, here is where you're going to be able to um, edit or choose how many seconds before that person is finishing. It's going to actually edit the video all the way down to when that person is finishing. And so you can show it five seconds before they cross the finish line, just two seconds, which is kind of what I prefer. Um, and then in this is where you're going to set that offset. So you're, if you have a lot of editing in your video, if you have like a long break, you're going to add in multiple offsets. So that way, if you have a long break between your first finisher and then your second finisher, you're able to edit that out and um, you know have it skip ahead to when that person is finishing. So your clock time. And then when the actual video is, is where you're going to see that person crossing. And in this video, just for demonstration purposes, it's going to be 10 seconds. Make sure you save your video. <coughs> now when you go to your website, you go to your results page. You can click video, and it'll auto automatically take you to where John Jessup is supposed to be finishing right here, two seconds before that's supposed to be John Jessup. You can do that for any participant, and it'll take them two seconds in the video before they're finishing. And then participants can do this as well? Yep. When they go to the results page? Yep. Okay. Yes. So you're going to look at the results page, and they're going to see the option to click on the video of when they're finishing. So when they, Nick would click on it, and this is where he's supposed to be finishing the process. Do I have any questions about video? Yes. So where, where you're importing the clock times to link it to the YouTube, is there a way to import a, a range of those offsets, um, like Excel or CSV or anything? The reason I ask is we did a uh, flash and dash a couple summers ago with a uh, kind of time trial wave start, and we could never get all you can't the do it. up. It was just impossible. You can't do that in a video. It's it's impossible. You would have to have an offset for each and every single person, That's exactly what and we, we don't support that. So okay. yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> No yeah, it, it was, I, I know that's a use case, but it's it's really small. <laughs> yeah. That's all we have for you guys.